Yo, what's up, bro? What's up, bro? How you doing, man? Good to finally catch up. I know we've been trying to do it, but I've just been kind of crazy with the with the work stuff, man. Yeah, cool. What area are you in? Right I'm now. I'm in uh right now I'm in Hollywood, bro. Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood. Oh uh, I'm in Hollywood at the crib. Oh, I've been seeing your post so much in Portugal. Are you over Portuguese? Nah, nah, I'm Salvadorian. I was in Portugal for like uh I was in Portugal like uh like last like two months ago. Wow. I was in Europe. Yeah, yeah, with a, yeah, was it a Europe tour? Uh, I just went. I just went to take a little vacation, get my head clear. I like to do like a. I like to do a little vacation once a year, get my head clear, reset. You know, come back, get back to it. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, man. First conversation for keeping up with power ones. It's, it's, it's big, you know. And I like to yeah. know. And I, I just, I, I would like to know what the inspiration behind and how do you feel being part of the broadcast. Man, it's amazing, bro. To be honest, you know, growing up in LA, uh, Power 106, I feel like is the most legendary hip hop station and brand, you know, from the city. And just growing up in LA, it's something that if you grew up in the city, you couldn't get away from. Like you would see it on the posters, you would see it on the billboards, you would listen to the radio station. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. listen to the, uh, legends like Big Boy in the Morning, you know, like those were like legendary days. Obviously, you know, the Baker Boys, um, you know, just all kind of, all kind of, you know, the good fellas, you know, Tito, like, you know, it's just legendary, bro. So now to be a part of it and to be broadcasting from a station that I grew up listening to is just amazing. You know, it's like super, super uh, humbling and just shows like if you put your mind to it, you could you can achieve whatever you want to do, you know? Okay, well, Power Six, you know, is one of the biggest hip hop platforms, right? So why was it especially dedicated to hip hop? And was there any hardness to penetrate into media industry? Yeah, so it, it, you know, it's 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 definitely you know one of the biggest platforms, and I just feel like that just goes with the rich history around it, and just you know different artists. You know, if you go across, uh, you know, just just the generations of hip hop artists that have 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 touched the game, and you know, are are definitely you know in that in that in that range of of greatness. Uh, yeah, you, you'll see that they had some kind of connection to Power One Hundred Six, whether it was either being broken there and you know performing at a at a show when they were first starting out or you know visiting the station when they were already established i mean i'm talking about people from tupac that have been to power 106 you know like we still have old audio from tupac where he's like shouting out power 106 so you know it just if you listen to some tupac songs as well you'll hear like he says power you know like on the on the track so i think that's what makes it such a great brand and you know what makes it such a connection to hip hop um, and the culture is because just, you know, just the legendary name behind it and how long it's been around and, you know, how much it's overcame, um, you know, through through a lot of changes, um, of just everything. And as far as being difficult, I feel like, yeah, it was definitely difficult. I mean, especially being in like LA market, LA is like number two market, you know, second to, to only to New York. So it's definitely difficult to break in when in, in, in the big markets. You know, it's not easy. Um, when you're in a big market, everything, everything is faster, everything is just there's a lot more going on. Obviously, you get to to you know see different artists, the biggest artists in the world, because obviously everybody's gonna come to that city because it's a major city, everybody's gonna stop at the station. And you know, it's 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 a lot going on, but I feel like that's why for me personally, I went and I decided that, I, you know, if I was going to make it on Power 106, I got to start at a smaller market. Yeah. So I did that. I started at a smaller market. I was in San Francisco for like three years. Um, you know, I got some great guidance out there. I got some great mentorships, which uh, a lot of advice, a lot of hard work, a lot of persistence. And, you know, I feel like all that was just a big setup to join Power 106 and it just made me who I was. And I was already like, had that mindset of quick paced and mindset of, you know, doing big things. So I just felt like that all just contributed to me being there and, you know, making it easier for me to get in. Oh, that, that's right. So before Power 106, where did you begin? Where did you start? It? Or was it just to start it from Power 106 like that? No, no, no. So I moved out to the Bay Area, like San Francisco. I lived there for about three years, three, four years. 
um, in the early 2010s. And uh, there I was, I started over at Clear Channel for some radio stations up there, um, you know, there or whatever. So then I left, I went to uh, 997 Now, which was under the CBS umbrella. And there I met like some great people, um, you know, like uh, Mary Diaz, who was like my, like my mentorship. I mean, I'm sorry, my uh, internship coordinator. She yeah. got me in there, but my 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 homegirl Nicole, who I worked with at a Clear Channel, she had just got a new position at CBS Radio 997 now. So she's the one that told me like, you know, you should come through, do an interview. It's way different here. It's cool. I was like, cool, I'm down. So uh, my homegirl Nicole Villagran, she told me pull up. So I went and then met Mary Diaz. Mary Diaz, you know, gave me an interview. She loved me. She brought me on the team. Ever since then, you know, I just kept hustling, hustling, hustling. Then I worked on my guy Strawberry, who's like a legend in the in the Bay Area radio scene. My guy Strawberry, uh, he had a show out there, um, seven to midnight. I think he's now like doing radio in Seattle. Um, but he was also like a great person to work with. It was at nights, like the show that I currently do is also the same slot, seven to midnight. Um, but he was also great man, super fun guy. Uh, super bubbly, great attitude, willing to help, asking, answering any question, great guidance, you know, whenever you had a question. Also, St. John on the same radio station, he was always cool. I would come through early sometimes before my internship and just crash his show and see if he needed help or anything. Great guidance, another another pro, another, you know, vet and a legend in the Bay Area radio scene as well. Um, so, you know, got to learn from those guys. Then I also, like, would always try to see who I can help at the radio station. So I'd go to the imaging department and there was this guy named Rage, um, which who connected me to Just Incredible. They did radio together in Vegas. So it was crazy just to connect with Rage. Rage also like crazy guy with the imaging, like doing all kind of crazy shit. Um, oh my bad, I don't know if I could cuss. Oh yeah. Cool? <laughs> okay. that, uh, yeah, so my bad. That, yeah, so just Rage was like another guy, like great to learn from and you know, always helping. Yeah, uh, gave, me, gave me a couple like commercial spots because he would like, you know, work on the commercials and work on the imaging for the radio station. For those that don't know, imaging is like, uh, you know, all the all the all the promos you hear on the air for like different things with yeah. the voices and all that. They put it together. They record the voices and they get that going. So Rage, uh, you know, he was also a big part of my growth as well. Let like giving me confidence through recording me and letting me do certain things that gave me a large boost of confidence. Yes. Where I was like, man, I could do this. I could do this, you know? And then of course the big guy, you know, the main guy up there, uh, Jazzy Jim, who was a program director, man, great guy, always there, 10 toes down, always like door always open for his office. If you ever needed anything. Yes, you, uh, yeah, you remember me also too, I was being, always being 10 toes down till when I tried to reach out my success, just because of being 10 toes down. You no, know, when you're trying to reach out to success, just trying to be humble, polite, yeah. something like that in hustling ways. So congrats, man, you know, that's a big step, yo. Yeah. That's a very, very big step. So, so as I said, back to you, Content Party, how do you feel working as greatest stars from hip hop community? Do you have any best experience from one of the stars? Oh, yeah, man. One of the stars, I think, uh, J. Cole, man. J. Cole was just, you know, through that whole grind I told you about coming up in the game and uh, in, the, in, in the radio game in San Francisco, man, I was listening to like J. Cole from J. Cole's start. And like I was like, man, Cole's such a dope spitter, man. He's so he's such a like he, he always like reminded me of Pac, you know, because he was like hard hitting bars. His delivery was like aggressive, like, you know, just like just like dirty bro just dirty you know like i've always fucked with cole man cole was always tight so i would listen to like the truly yours series while i was living up in the bay like truly yours one two all like all them joints you know and just listening to like little b-sides like that and cole was always like motivational inspirational always kept me going and shit so i was always like man cole is tight i want to meet cole one day you know and this is around the time when i was just breaking into the radio game i remember i was talking to my little cousin renee and i told like my little cousin like yo la leakers man i want to work with them one day so, you know, come come full circle, man. I'm working with the LA Leakers now. Yeah. Uh, we flew out to North Carolina last year. And uh, was it last year? Yeah, I think it was last year. Yeah, last year. We flew out to North Carolina to do the cold freestyle. That was actually my second time. You, you, know, you, first you, time. Say, you, you say North Carolina. North Carolina? Yeah, North right. Carolina, where Cole's from. Yeah, we, we flew out there to get the freestyle. But before that, I actually met him one time in Vegas. I was able to chop it up with him. But this time it was more like, 
you know, obviously Vegas, we were there like not working with, he's more like, I mean, he had just performed this shit, but after his performance, I got to chop it up with him for a little bit, had like a quick little convo, just told him like, you know, he was a goat pretty much. But in North Carolina, we got to chop it up more. And just like every interaction with Coleman, like you could tell he's such a genuine, cool person, bro. Like he, he like really cares about his fans. He really cares about people. He really cares about the community. He really cares about issues. He really cares about the culture. Like Cole was just like, for sure, like I feel like the best artist I've ever met just based on what he meant to me before. And you know how sometimes they say like, never meet your idols because you know they might be assholes and then you might not think of them the same like cole was the opposite like i met him and through meeting him bro i actually became more fond of him as an artist and as a person because he was really solid you know he's solid 10 toes down like i was talking about earlier and i yeah. think like the the music game the radio game it's hard to find people that are 10 toes down not everybody in the game is 10 toes down there's a lot of yeah you, you, a lot of you, different you. personalities you, you mean being committed to someone, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, it's always it's always different. It's always different. Oh, so content pop, you love hip hop, right? Yeah. Just want to know your five favorite rappers at the moment. Just talk at the moment. Currently or like all time? Your all time favorite rappers, five. All time favorite? It's always a tough one, man. Top five is always, it's always hard. It's always hard. You're putting me on the spot right now. All right, let's try, bro. All right, I'm going to go number, number five. Yeah, number five. Five, five to one. Five to number one. Number five, I'll, I'll, I'll probably go with, uh, I'll probably go with J. Cole, number five. J. Cole. J. Cole, number five. Cole. Number, number four, I'm going to say Jay-Z. Chiga. Jay Z, Jigga, yeah, Jigga. Jigga. Number three, I gotta go with my man Nas, bro. Escobar, ill, nah, ill, nah, ill, nah, ill, nah, ill. Nah, yeah, yeah. Number two, gotta Jigga. go with B.I.G. R.I.P. B.I.G. The third one, you see who? Third one. What was that? The third one, number three, who? Oh, number three? Yeah. Nas, Nas, Nas. okay, I got you. Number, number two, two B.I.G., right? The notorious B.I.G. Biggie, man, number two, and then number one, Pac, Tupac, man, Tupac Shakur, the Shakur, Shakur, Shakur. <laughs> yeah. yes. Have you ever come across Afrobeats? Uh, what was that? Have you ever come across Afrobeats, African sounds? Oh uh, yeah, um, I've actually met a few Afrobeat artists. Uh, I've met uh, the artist Afro B. I'm not sure if you heard of Afro B had the song Joanna. Yeah. Um, I met him. I met Burna Boy. Burna Boy. Burna Boy. Yeah, man. Uh, I like Afro beat, man. I like Afro beat. I like, I like these new, like, you know, subgenres as well, man. I think it's good. I think it's uh it's good to have these different sounds and you know. Okay, what do you have to say about Afro beat and Africa so? I think it's great, man. I like I like the different sounds. Like I love the sounds. It's super. It's super good for like any time I feel like. If you want to relax, you know, you're just chilling on like a Sunday, you put it on, it's going to make you feel good. It's going to it's bring the good vibes. If you're out, you know, with a girl or something, they put that on, it's cool, man. It's cool, like little vibe music. You're out dancing, it's perfect music to dance to. You're out driving, it's cool in the car, you know, you chill, save you from the road rage, you know, you cool cool out, no road rage. Put yeah. The Afro beat <laughs> so. You yeah, I feel you. Have you ever hosted an African style in one of your sessions? No, I can't say I have. Well, whom actually, do, then whom do you wish to host? Actually, Burner Boy and Afro BF came up to the show. Yeah, they've came up. Burner Boy. Burner Boy, yeah. Burner Boy, that's great. Well, you are always LA Lakers, Power 106, and Shape Food 5. I mean, how do you manage all this? So, it's it's a balance. You got to have a right balance. It's a lot going on, you know. Like I started out with the LA Lakers running okay. the social. Yeah, you balance time or work. Yeah, I mean it's it's you got to balance time. You got to balance time. You got to balance the the workload. You know, it's a lot of stuff going on. You got to be you got to be organized, man, because everything don't fall into the same thing. So you got to know where to put what, what to do with what, what would fit best for what. You know, having all three platforms. Um, I when I took over. When I started working with LA Leaguers, I was, you know, 
I took over the social media, the LA Leakers IG page only had like 23,000 followers. You know, you look at it now, it's like 297,000. So it's just like consistency, yeah. persistency, and just like follow through. You just gotta have that. And just knowing, being tapped into the culture, being tapped into the game, knowing what's cool, knowing what's hot, what's not, what's gonna flow with your audience, what's not. Um, but yeah, overall though, balancing those things is not easy. Um, at the beginning, it was a struggle. Now I feel like I got it more down pat and I'm able to just, you know, I'm able to do my thing in all of them and 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 balance it out perfectly to where it's even not as stressful anymore because I, I know the right balance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you really inspire me. I've always been looking at you at the power one, zero six, and I'd be like, ah, shit, this man is really inspiring. You really yeah. inspire me. That little like, shit already doing. Yeah. Hope one day. I hope, I, I hope even on, yeah, I hope one day you can have even a link up when they touch down to LA. Oh yeah, man. Whenever you in the city, man, hit my phone, hit my line, bro. We're gonna link up. We're gonna link up. I'll bring you through the radio station. I'll give you a little tour, show you, you know, where it goes down there, bro. You know what I'm saying? And then that's it's too easy, bad. too easy. Yeah, I appreciate that. you having me and, 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 and you know taking the time to talk to me too, just about my story, my journey, and all that, bro. It's love. You know what I'm saying? Anytime you got any questions, you want some yeah. advice or anything, hit, hit me, bro. I got you. Then I appreciate that. Thank you for your time, bro. Next time, I see. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Keep doing your thing, too. I see you doing your thing, man. Salute.